All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome to this next episode of Tutor Tutors where we are continuing our unit on the cell looking at M phase of the cell cycle. So in the earlier lessons we've gone over interphase and then we went over the S phase specifically where DNA replication took place and now we are going to move into M phase where we have both mitosis and cytokinesis. Learning targets for the day. First learning target is to review the cell cycle, just trying to get us all in the right mode of what happened through those different processes in interphase. Next, we're going to describe the phases of mitosis. For our purposes, we are going to talk about four different phases of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Then we are going to identify the main process that takes place during each stage of mitosis looking at what are the key events that happen in each phase. And lastly, we are going to compare cytokinesis in animal cells and cytokinesis in plant cells because that is going to happen a little bit differently between the two different types of cells. So let's get started. Looking at the cell cycle, remember we start off, we have interphase and G1, that is gap one. That is where the cell is going to grow a little bit larger, typically about twice the size, and it's going to continue doing the typical normal life processes. It's going to be responding to stimuli. It's going to be both sending signals and receiving signals, and it will be building protein through that process of transcription and translation. It's going to be taking in food particles that it can break down for energy use. It's going to be doing all of the typical processes that are involved in being alive, and that would be G1. And during G1, the DNA exists in that decondensed state that we call chromatin. And if it were to condense at this stage, it would appear as these two unreplicated chromosomes. So this cell has two chromosomes, each of which in gap one have not replicated yet because we haven't gone through the process of DNA replication, which takes place during the S phase or the synthesis phase. Moving on, let's go into the synthesis phase, where now the DNA is going to get replicated. And if the DNA were to condense at the end of this phase, it would appear as two replicated chromosomes, each replicated chromosome being made up of two sister chromatids. Those exact copies of each other are our sister chromatids, and the sister chromatids are attached to each other at the centromere. So right here would be the centromere, for each of our chromosomes. But it's not condensed yet. It's still decondensed in that phase of chromatin. And then we enter into gap two, where all of that process of synthesis will be checked to make sure that the DNA was replicated appropriately. As long as the DNA was replicated appropriately, then that means that the cell can now exit interphase and enter into the M phase. The first part of which is mitosis. And the first stage of mitosis is prophase. So here we are. This is what takes place during prophase. First, the chromosomes are going to condense because it's very hard to separate out chromosomes that would be decondensed. They would get tangled up. They probably would break. It would be very hard to, in an organized fashion, separate them out. So first, the chromosomes must condense. Next, we also have to have our nuclear envelope disintegrate. We can't have a membrane around our nucleus because then the chromosomes would be completely inaccessible to the rest of the cell. And lastly, we are going to form our spindle apparatus. The spindle apparatus between animal cells and plant cells is slightly different, which we'll talk about in just a second. So here we go. The chromosomes now have condensed. We have lost our nucleus because it is disintegrated. And the spindle apparatus here has started to form. For animal cells, they have these structures that we call centrioles. The centrioles are going to be what controls the mitotic spindle. Also, some textbooks will tell you about another phase that will exist between prophase and metaphase called prometaphase. 
And in that phase, that is when the mitotic spindle will attach to the centromere of each of our chromosomes. But for our purposes, we aren't going to include that stage as an actual phase. We are only going to go from prophase directly to metaphase. So in metaphase, now the chromosomes line up along the equator of the cell. The mitotic spindle, which has attached them, moves each of our replicated chromosomes right in line with each other. They now appear in a single file line, taking us to anaphase. And in anaphase, now the sister chromatids are going to be pulled apart from each other by the mitotic spindle. So the mitotic spindle is going to shorten, and as the mitotic spindle shortens, each sister chromatid is pulled apart. Now that we have pulled apart each of our sister chromatids, we enter into telophase. And telophase is very much like prophase, but in reverse. Our spindle apparatus is going to break down, our two new nuclei are going to form, and lastly, our chromosomes, once they are encased in their new nuclei, are going to decondense. So we have our new nuclei that have formed around our single copies of chromosomes, and they decondense back into the form of chromatin. So now we have a cell that has two nuclei in it, each nuclei an exact copy of the other nuclei. Their DNA is completely identical. And that is the end of mitosis. Uh, so at the end of mitosis, we have one cell with two nuclei in it. And the reason for that is because mitosis is the process of karyokinesis, the process of replicating our nucleus. That's the actual definition for mitosis. We don't have two cells at the end of mitosis. We only have one cell at the end of mitosis. We'll only have two cells when we end up going through the process called cytokinesis, or cellular division. But here, if we look at an actual slide of cells, what we can see is most of these cells are actually in interphase. You can see the nucleus that's present, and you can see the chromatin within the nucleus. But some of these cells are in the M phase, and they have no visible nuclei, and their DNA is condensed. Some of those cells would be like these, this cell right here, which is in anaphase. You can see the chromosomes on either end being pulled apart but the vast majority of cells would be in interphase, going through either gap one, S, or gap two. After mitosis, now we get to the process called cytokinesis, where in cytokinesis, the cell will divide, and we will end up with two brand new identical cells. These identical cells are referred to as daughter cells. They are genetically 100% the same as each other as long as the process of DNA replication in S phase occurred perfectly because all they have is just copies of the same exact chromosomes. But it occurs a little bit differently in plant cells compared to animal cells because plant cells, they have a cell wall. So a plant cell can't do what an animal cell can do. An animal cell can just pinch in, and that's gonna be done using microtubules. A plant cell is going to have to build a cell wall actually in the center of it, working its way out. This is called a cell plate. The animal cell, where it's pinching in, this is referred to as a cleavage furrow. And the animal cell will just continue to pinch in until the two sides, the two different cells, have separated out, and then we end up with our two daughter cells. The plant cell, it's not going to pinch in at all. It's going to continuously build that cell wall right across the middle until it has made its way the entire way across, separating out each of the daughter cells. So let's watch this happen. Here you can see that the animal cell is separated out, and we have our two identical daughter cells for our animal cells. The plant cell, you can see it's just going to continuously send the vesicles, which happen to contain the components of the cell wall, right to the center of the cell. They will fuse together, building the cell wall. Once the cell wall has made its way completely across, we get to the point where it is now separated and we have our two new plant cells. And that is how 
cytokinesis is different between plant cells and animal cells. In animal cells, the cell is able to pinch in and then it is able to produce two brand new daughter cells, but a plant cell has to build a cell wall right along the middle, separating out each of the new daughter cells. In the top view of a plant cell, just so we can see it, it starts off right in the center and that cell plate is just going to build right out until the cell wall has made its way across the entirety of the cell. And then we have cleaved the two cells into their respective daughter cells. So in summary of this, at the end of mitosis, all you've done is replicated your nuclei. That's it. You have one cell with two identical nuclei in it. And they are identical because S phase produced the exact copies of DNA. And since we have copies of DNA going into each of our nuclei, they are identical to each other. So the process of mitosis is actually going to sort, separate out those different chromosome copies from each other. That's its goal. That's the role that mitosis serves. And it does it in those four different phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We have to have cytokinesis for the production of our new daughter cells. Without cytokinesis, cellular replication has not taken place. We need to have the cytoplasm divide Otherwise, we still have only one cell. And the resulting daughter cells, they are genetically identical to the parent cell. This is an extremely important thing for us to remember. Every single cell that makes up our body has the exact same DNA in it. We all started as one cell, and now we are made up of a few trillion cells. Each cell that we produce to make up our body have the exact same DNA. So it doesn't matter if it's a single-celled organism that's eukaryotic or a multi-celled organism like ourselves. Every time that mitosis and cytokinesis takes place, the product is two genetically identical daughter cells. And that is the cell cycle. Until next time, be awesome, stay awesome.